morning and welcome to Today on Saturday. I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Coming up soon on the program, we'll meet Sheikh Ahmed Didat, the Muslim missionary who chose Good Friday to deliver a message many Christians regard as an affront. First this morning to a story that has scandalised local church leaders this Easter weekend. Sheikh Ahmed Didat is a South African Muslim missionary who's in Australia to deliver a provocative message in his lecture, Easter, a Muslim Viewpoint. In a country that prides itself on the right to free speech, it is not the content of his lecture that's caused affront, it's the timing. Sheikh Didat delivered his speech on the most solemn day of the Christian calendar, Good Friday. Sheikh Didat joined me earlier. Good morning to you. Good morning, ma'am. What's the purpose of your visit to Australia? My purpose is to educate my people, as well as the Christians in this country, in regards to our relationship with Christianity because Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. See, the bulk of mankind, the non-Muslims, they do not know that in this holy book of ours, the Holy Quran, is enshrined Jesus Christ. That in this vast volume, you know, Muhammad, the so-called author of this book, the Quran. He is mentioned far less time than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in this book is mentioned 500% more times than Muhammad. But you don't believe that the Christian version of what happened at Easter is that the is, correct version? That is true. What, so what's says, your version? You know, so he says now, number one, the people don't know that we believe in Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth which many modern day Christians, including the bishops of the Anglican Church, they don't believe today, but we believe. We believe that Jesus was the Messiah, translated Christ. And we believe that he gave life back to the dead by God's permission, and he was born blind and the lepers by God's permission. And we believe that God took him up and he's coming back. Now, all this the Christian doesn't know. He only knows that no, we disagree with what we disagree with. Says now, says now, what is the reason? Why is it that we want to be different? We want to be funny? What makes the Muslim different from the Christian? But you don't believe that Jesus died and was resurrected right, at Easter. Right. So we say the Christian is boasting that on these three days, these eventful days, the passion of Jesus, there were 300 Old Testament prophecies fulfilled on this day. But I'm telling them that the one that got away, you see in fishing, I'm an angler, and when we talk, we talk about the one that got away. The one that got away, the one that was not fulfilled. Now, I am here to educate people about the one that got away. And, and you will upset Christians though, won't you? You must, I suppose, concede I that. My motive is to educate. But can I, can I put to you, if we could just concentrate on, on this one particular issue at the moment, yes. can I put to you that it will be considered insensitive by many Christians that you have chosen Easter to come and deliver this message? No, no. I, I have no plans whatsoever. Some months ago, they were asking me for the blank slot that I have in my programs. So, so it's a coincidence so it, it, that it, it's it Easter. Is a, it is a unbelievable. It's un that my, my very first major lecture happened to be on Good Friday. Extraordinarily it's unbelievable. It's extraordinary. But coincidence has to happen. But now, to me, this is the most appropriate subject for the day. Let's say on Christmas Eve, on, on Christmas Day, the birth of Jesus, we are supposed to celebrate. I'm talking about the passion of Jesus. You know, what happened to him and how he died and then they, they beat him up. No, doesn't make sense. All it right. doesn't make sense. When you talk about Easter at Christmas time, it doesn't make sense. No. You talk about Easter, Easter time. All right, well, let's say at Ramadan, right. the Pope goes to Tehran and right. says, you've got it all wrong. Right, okay. Come, but how would he be received? He spoke, His Holiness, yes. Just coincidence that you, look, you mentioned his name. He has just written a book called Crossing the Threshold of Hope. It had become the world's bestseller in 12 countries immediately on publication. Right. In this he says, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. So, suppose it's a coincidence that Ramadan is the occasion when he happens to be in Tehran and we are having a dialogue. He says, now look, you people, man, you're killing yourself. Who the Pope is reason with us. He says, you know, you Muslims, you pray five times a day every day of the year. Then, you know, that whole month of Ramadan, you're going to go through hunger and thirst. Because from before sunrise to sunset, the Muslims, no eating, no drinking, no smithing, no smoking. So what kind of life are you people leading? Is your God hungry for that? 
is your God hungry for your prayers? Is he hungry for your fasting? He says no. Now he has a right. He has a right to say, look, there is an easy way. Can I ask you this? Are you expecting trouble on your visit to Australia? Because you, I notice you have two bodyguards in the studio here. I, this is the first time in my life. I don't know Australia. You know, it's, it's, it's a rough country, like the old cowboy days. I don't know. You know, the cowboys and cooks we see in the films. I thought maybe this vast continent, please, please forgive me. <laughs> please forgive me. As Australia as, has enshrined in its democracy freedom of speech, right, shape. I, I don't think that... I don't know. I, see, I experience it very much. I appreciate it very much. But you know, you don't know, some men, you don't know what's going on. Like when I go to America, the West, I don't know if there's a cowboys and cooks are still around you know, with, the, with the guns ready to, for blazing away. Can I ask you this? Why, do, do you believe that we must all worship the same God? I mean, we don't all eat the same food, we don't all speak the same language. Why must we all worship the same God? Why isn't there no. room for us all to differ? No, no. We can, we, are, we must tolerate each other as points of views, differences. But everybody is aiming to get a consensus. Everybody. The Christian wants the whole world to be Christianized. True or false? Look at the present moment. There are 35,000 crusaders occupied in Africa, raising the dust. Not priests, ministers of the church, but crusaders from America. They want to change the continent. They want to make Africa a Christian continent. In 1977, in Indonesia, there were 6,000 crusaders trying to convert the Indonesians. And they have succeeded so far in converting 15 million Indonesians into Christianity. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Indonesia a Christian nation. Now, this is an aim, a noble aim, from the Christian point of view. Similarly now, since Christianity is a missionary religion, Islam also is a missionary religion. As much as the Christian is out to share his faith with the rest of mankind, we also want to share our faith with the rest of mankind. And Islam, I don't know whether you know, is the fastest growing religion in the world. Okay. In the West, in Britain, there are more Muslims than Methodists. All right, I still think there'd be plenty of people who question your timing, but thank you for your time this Good. morning. Good. A controversial South African Muslim missionary visiting Australia has found reason to thank his critics. Sheikh Ahmad Didat says those who've criticized the timing of his first Australian lecture have done him an enormous favor. One opponent, the head of the Wesley Mission, says an anticipated attack on Christianity on Good Friday is scandalous. As he embarks on his first Australian tour, Sheikh Ahmed Didat says he hopes to educate Muslims about Christianity and Christians about Islam. This Good Friday, what they're talking about, these things didn't happen. And my proof is from the Bible itself. The timing of the first public rally so on Good Friday at Sydney's Town Hall has created a storm. Friday. Can you imagine if Christians hired the Sydney Town Hall to deny that Muhammad was a prophet, to attack the Quran and to displace Islamic faith in the middle of Ramadan, what would happen? I'll tell you what, I would have to join Selman Rushdie. Tour organisers say they hope Reverend Moyes will meet the Sheikh to discuss the differences between the two religions. But we are not attacking, we just want to explain whether you believe or do not, it is up to you. The Sheikh believes Reverend Moyes has done him a great favour. Look, if he had ignored me, your newspapers and your radios and your TVs would have never known that that had come and gone. The New South Wales Ecumenical Council declined to comment on this sensitive matter, saying it does not want to inflame the relationship between Christians and Muslims, particularly at this holy time. While the Australian Federation of Islamic Councils welcomes Sheikh Ahmed Didat's visit, but are disappointed that it clashes with their annual congress. Plans for a Muslim lecture to be held at the Sydney Town Hall on Good Friday have sparked a religious row. South African Muslim leader Sheikh Ahmed Didat has offered Christian church leaders the chance to join the theological debate. But they've rejected it because the event coincides with one of the holiest days in the Christian calendar. 78-year-old Sheikh Ahmed Didat has taken on religious leaders throughout the world, arguing the teachings of Islam with evangelists like Jimmy Swaggart. We are not taking uh, exception to that because this is, we are not used to the, our means. But it's the timing of his Easter visit that's upset Christian church leaders. The Sheikh has made a booking on Good Friday at no less a venue.